Good evening ladies and gentlemen and today we are taking a look at Grasshopper and we are going to take a look at this parametric ceiling by uh, in a bar in like the Rizu bar by Martino Hutz. It has this very nice wave function inside of the bar that we want to replicate those from the horror, from the ceiling and you have a slight distance to it and then you have this uh, wave function that goes uh, through it and we want to replicate that there's another video I made that, that I will link below here that has that we already covered that sh that shows this parametric ceiling as well uh, in a grasshopper model and we want to use um, or we make a different script that will basically be applied to this one. So stay tuned and we will get through this. So anyhow, uh, this time we will actually start this from scratch and I didn't do this connection now yet, but I will go along and show you how I thought about this process myself so you will be able to just catch along. So my initial thought process would be to first create two curves that create uh, this function here. And we just create them here, we'll make them a bit more extreme like this. And I will put another one over here and I will just draw them on the floor at the moment. And now I will be uh, rotating them up like this and I will create a loft between those curves, like that. You will see there's a loft option coming up. And we just hit OK for that. Now, if we go to the rendered view or the shaded view, we see we have this interesting curve. And if you put points on, we can also play around a little bit more with this curve until it fits the way how we want to have it. And I actually want to have this a little bit less extreme here, like that. And I want to move those up as well a little bit. Okay, good. I will just delete the initial curves. And now we have the grasshopper uh, environment and we want to um, create a grid of points first. So it basically follows this very um, this strict curve that we have here. So this in this, it doesn't matter how the sides are, we basically cut it almost out. So we can do this by defining um, uh, on the ground a just a rectangle like this oh, under polygon or uh, polyline that creates our shape how we want to have it exactly. That will be like our inner shape. And now we will have those two things that will be created in that. So we're going to do is we're going to import the geometry now of the pole line curve from the bottom. And then we also do it again with double click, geometry, enter, set one geometry, set the geometry of the above thing. We will hide this one so it will not be displayed twice. Now we will create a um, boundary surface. So we have this surface like here, right? And we want to create points that will be defined on this thing. And they will have, should be, um, if possible, always in this vertical and horizontal like grids. So we want to have it like this basically. And those will be, and each of those, um, those things that will be one of our uh, vertical wood structures. So we're going to use boundary surface for that and just connect them to it together. And I will just quickly do this so you can see it better. That does not for you. Um, and we're going to divide this surface now. And um, as we saw in the our thing, it looks like as if a distance in between those things in, into every direction is the same so we want to keep that like the same more or less uh, as well um, 
so we can do this by uh, for example knowing the bounding box of this thing and then we can explode um, the the box by deconstruct vrep or deconstruct even the box like this it should give us the sizes of our things here yeah it gives us two different sizes of the bounding box and now we need to get out the exact size of that so the distance in between those things will be more or less the same so we're going to use under domain and then the bounds they're already fine but we need to deconstruct uh, those bounds deconstruct domain from the x and the y and now we have a distance between one to the other and i think we can just use it by a simple addition or multiplication we can actually get the whole range of those things because it goes to the minus until the plus so i think we just need to um subtract those two things together am i correct or is that the wrong thinking here so if i do the subtraction the end first and then with the beginning it should give us the whole stretch of it at least here it does yeah and we would do the same with the other result as well so it gives us the whole stretch um, now this uh, will be now multiplied uh, by a certain number that we want to use here that will act as the u and the v count so it gets it will be like regular so this will be the u count i think and the other one will be the v count they might be the two different ones okay and as you see the distance is always kind of equal to it so because if you would because now the u count has a different count than the v count um, so the division of the surface but we want to have it so those divisions will be always kind of equal okay now we need to put those points on top of our uh, defined surface we can just do this by project uh, we need to project it from to, the, to like this one there are two this the other one projects to the to the base plane but we wanted to project it on the surface so we can use the surface that we have from here and the curves and we can use it from here i think and we actually need to use a different command because um yeah we need to use this one um so we need to go from there from the bottom we need to use the geometry that we have here from the beginning and those points from here and the direction needs to be in the z as far as now yeah and it now projects those points perfectly uh, on top as you see those ones are the same as the ones here in the bottom very good um now we have our uh, our things uh, defined uh, but we also want to um place the 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 points on because we in in the example those things are also going up uh, to a certain height so we want to also uh, get the entire height until the, the ceiling is flat because on top of here there should be a flat um, surface so we can simply do this by moving up the points that we created here in the beginning at the, the division and we just used a z component and then also um, create a certain amount of numbers we can now just do it manually like this and we move it just uh, a little upward so it's, it will be like on top of this thing okay let's just hide those things that we have so far a little bit so we, it gives us a little bit more usable and um, in this example uh, those lines they're always horizontally cut so they're not going with the thing but they're horizontally cut and that's what we want to create now here as well 
So we do this by uh, doing a construction of a rectangle and use the input geometry of this thing here. And we're going to create a, a domain as well for this one that has a start and end point. And we are going to want to have them rectangular as well. So we use a negative of this one. So it will be based basically created like um, I would just draw this down quickly. So we have our main points like this. And then we will be having the rectangle like this. And it basically creates uh, the matrix like um, because we want to have an X and the Y size. So we want to create the matrix or the, I'm sorry, the domain that this would be the, the negative point from here to all the way to the positive like here. So we go from minus one to plus one. And we do the same thing in the uh, Y size. So this will be then um, plus one and down here will be minus one. So this is all what it does basically. And so this would be the minus one, the plus one, and we put it in the X and the Y. So the X and the Y. And you see now that it will be all very nice in the same shape. Um, we also now want to extrude them upwards. So this, those will be um, created all the way to the direct location here. So we're going to use box rectangle for this. This is a very easy to use command and it also is very lightweight. So that's very positive. And we, have, we want to know the distance between this point here and this point down there. So we're going to use the uh, projected points here and the points that we just moved upwards. This gives us a distance of those two points in this case. And for, it seems to not be working correctly because it just gives us empty points sometimes ah, okay but that's fine it gives us those empty points because those are i think those excluded points out there so this doesn't really matter anyhow um we're going to use the rectangle as the base thing and the height of the distance and as you see this already creates exactly the thing that we wanted to create um now furthermore i want to just create a boundary surface on the top so we will create the same kind of top that we typing as horrible. Um, the same boundary surface here on the top of those things. I guess we need to move it upwards like this. Okay, don't need to do this like this. And now we have our surface here on the top that we basically look up to. And I also want to reduce the size of our things just a little bit. So we have this nice effect of it. Okay, this also works pretty great and I also now want to maybe reduce the distance of it a little bit. Yeah, I think this works pretty good so far. Great. Let me just um, uh, bake this now into the round geometry. So this is what we have here now and I also want to extrude this surface here. Just a little bit more above it. I will explode it and will remove some of the outer bits a little bit. So now we have our inner piece like that. So it works pretty great. Let me just go under view and exclude the preview. Yeah, this looks pretty good. And if you have V-Ray, for example, or if there are also other rendering um, potential engines that you can use in this one, I will just group those things together quickly and there is a basically of libraries that we can just um, drag and drop into here so we just can take a look at how it would it, uh, more or less look like. So we apply this texture here, go back to the render view and yeah this looks actually pretty much how it will be in the restaurant. Obviously we need to still put the furniture and stuff in like this but I think this, this already works pretty great and I want to just under view create a different deck dollies exactly yeah so a more dramatized effects so yeah this actually looks pretty good let me just try to quickly render it out and see how the result would be for that so yeah 
I think that's pretty much obviously the wood can have a different texture, but it's just something that you can just play around with really, really easily. So yeah, I think this is actually a good success. Uh, thank you very much for watching. If you have any more questions, just let me know. Um, this was a more like a type of thing of video, how I made it more uh, like on the go, let's say. Um, so I would like to see how this will work out more in the future and if this uh, is something that, that you want to see this more like kind of free thinking or the thought process while doing that. Actually let me change the... Um, I wanted to do like a box mapping actually. And we just create a little box like this and cap it and yes because the... okay now the because as you see in this in the rendering that we just made the uh, those things are horizontal and this is not really how it would work in real life but this looks now with the correct um, look way better and way more expect how we want to have it anyway thanks so very much for watching um, leave a like or some stuff like this blah 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 uh, and see you in the next one hope you like those kind of interpretations of um, parametric um, ceilings and interiors for example. So see you in the next one.